Hello, this is Dr. Stuart Tepper, Professor of Neurology at the Geisel School of Medicine and Director of the Dartmouth Headache Clinic. I'll be discussing the publication, a Phase 2B randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial of ubrogapant for the acute treatment of migraine by Tiffany Voss and colleagues. This study report was published in Cephalalgia. I selected this article to discuss because many of our patients with migraine experience incomplete pain relief and ongoing disability despite the use of acute treatment, including triptans. Many of our patients have vascular disease and so cannot use triptans or dihydroergotamine. Ubrogapant is a calcitonin gene-related peptide CGRP receptor antagonist, or GPANT, developed for the acute treatment of migraine and therefore has no vasoconstrictive effects. Other medications in the GPANT class have shown significant benefit for acute treatment of migraine, but often at the expense of major liver toxicity. This study was intended to assess the efficacy, safety, and tolerability of abrogapant for a single attack of migraine, with or without aura, in adults. The methods of the study were, this was a phase 2B randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, dose-ranging, multicenter study involving adults with a one-year history or more of episodic migraine, with or without aura. Eligible patients experienced two to eight moderate or severe migraine attacks per month in each of the two months prior to screening. Randomization was stratified based on the participant's self-reported usual response to tryptan therapy. Patients were allocated in a one-to-one ratio to one of the following treatment groups. 1, 10, 25, 50, or 100 milligram of ubrogapant or placebo. Patients were provided a single dose of study medication and were instructed to treat a qualifying migraine with key features, including moderate or severe intensity, onset within four hours, not previously treated for that attack, and not a recurrence. Key findings of the study were 640 patients administered the study treatment, of whom 627, or 98%, completed the study. The mean age was 40.8 years, 87% of the patients were female, 30.2% experienced migraine with aura, and 31.3% experienced severe impairment of daily activities due to migraine. The usual migraine treatment was a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug in 71.6% and an oral tryptan in 40.6%. There was a positive response trend across ubrogapant doses as measured by the percentage of patients who achieved two-hour pain freedom, moving a patient from moderate to severe pain to zero pain at two hours. The 25 and 50 milligram doses of ubrogapant demonstrated nominal significance over placebo for two-hour pain freedom as measured by the proportion of patients who achieved two-hour pain freedom. Ubrogapant 100 milligrams was significantly superior to placebo for two-hour pain freedom. 25.5% for the active versus 8.9% for the placebo. None of the ubrogapant dose groups demonstrated superiority to placebo for the two-hour headache response, which is defined as moving a patient from moderate to severe pain down to either zero or mild pain. Nausea and dizziness were more common for the active ubrogapant groups across doses than for placebo. Somnolence was more common with placebo. Otherwise, adverse events were similar between ubrogapant and placebo. Here are my thoughts and analysis of this study. Migraine is now considered a major risk factor for vascular disease, as shown in the study published by Tobias Kurth and colleagues in the BMJ early in 2016. A search is underway for migraine-specific acute medication beyond NSAIDs that does not have vasoactive properties. One potential class for this holy grail would be the CGRP receptor antagonist small molecules, or GPANTs. This phase two study demonstrates efficacy and tolerability of ubrogapant, a non-vasoactive acute medication that looks like it might fit this need. Ubrogapant met the primary endpoint to pain freedom at two hours when patients treated a migraine at moderate to severe levels of pain. Tolerability appeared good, and so far, safety has been acceptable. The dose that appeared to work best was 100 milligrams.
Clinicians are now in a waiting game for whether this GPANT will succeed in pivotal registration studies to include randomized control arms and open-label safety extension. At this point, with this investigational medication, clinicians need to monitor developments and await regulatory evaluation and, if appropriate, approval. Then we may have the opportunity to use safer acute medications in our migraine patients. At this point, larger randomized control trials need to confirm efficacy, and a large open-label extension trial needs to be completed to prove safety before ubrogapan can be submitted to regulatory authorities for evaluation and approval. That's where we stand at this time.